Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll take a look at the new Perry Mason series from HBO and analyze its style. <laughs> For those in the know, the character of Perry Mason has been at the center of many different types of media. He's probably most well known, though, as the main character of a long-running television series which was in turn based on a series of books by author Earl Stanley Gardner. The TV series was originally broadcast from 1957 to 1966, running for nine seasons and 271 episodes. In it, actor Raymond Burr portrayed Perry Mason as a clean-shaven, unflappable defense attorney who was always able to get people to confess to a crime on the witness stand. We're not going to discuss the style of the original series in depth today, partly because much of it was shot in black and white, and partly because most of the styles featured were in the mod and jet age fashions of the late 50s and early 60s, which were clean but overall unremarkable. Meanwhile, the new Perry Mason series from HBO, which features Matthew Reese in the title role, is a gritty and noirish origin story for the character, attempting to make him seem more like a real person with human flaws. Whereas the Perry Mason of the original series was a well-groomed and unflappable defense attorney, this series introduces us to the character at possibly his lowest point. As an unemployed, divorced owner of a now-defunct dairy farm on the edges of Los Angeles in 1932. Not only is the city in the throes of the Great Depression, but there's also quite a bit of institutional corruption going on, which we see plainly. Thankfully for us as viewers, this new series is far more interesting from a stylistic point of view, and for clothes buffs, this is a particularly special time in the history of menswear. At this point in the 1930s, men's styles had completely emerged from the Victorian era into the modern era. The Prince of Wales, later to be the Duke of Windsor, was setting style trends the world over, and menswear as a whole was at its most detailed, elegant, and flattering in all of the 20th century, at least in our opinion. This show exemplifies everything that we love about 1930s fashion. From rich fabric patterns, to classic and flattering silhouettes, to the copious wearing of hats and other accessories, we think it's really the height of classic menswear. In fact, we appreciate the style of this era so much that we wrote an entire book about it. You can find that book, Gentlemen of the Golden Age, here. Of course, also in the 1930s, racism, inequality, poverty, unemployment, and corruption were all running rampant, and this isn't something that's glossed over by the show. Though we won't get into the details of the plot here, the costumes worn by the various characters are a treat for the eyes and really for any lover of classic men's style. So let's start by examining the style of the man himself, Perry Mason. At least at the beginning of the series, Perry's style does an excellent job of illustrating just what state he's in. He's a grizzled World War I veteran, desperate and downtrodden, and in some scenes is portrayed as really being just above homeless. His most distinctive style choice is a heavily worn leather jacket. This is somewhat unique as leather jackets weren't typically worn as outerwear by most men at this time period unless specifically required as part of one's job, say for example being a pilot. Still, this jacket gives him a distinctly working class air and helps him to keep a low profile overall when he's doing things like investigating and searching for clues. He owns only one suit, a simple gray wool suit with a notched lapel that is baggy and somewhat rumpled in its fit, really in the style of a sack suit. He favors striped and patterned shirts in shades of pale brown or ivory, which for someone of his means would be easy to maintain in that day and age. 
He rarely buttons up his collar entirely, which adds to his dilapidated air, and he also wears the short pattern ties that were characteristic of the era. However, he doesn't pair these shorter ties with higher rise trousers, which also would have been common at the time. We're not sure if this is just an oversight on the part of the costume designer or a deliberate choice of Mason the character. To show how little he cares about his appearance, his clothes are often dirty and worn, and he'll wear them in multiple scenes, sometimes over multiple days. In one scene, he even pays a coroner to let him take a necktie from one of the residents of his morgue. At the time, though, many men actually didn't own a lot of clothing, so it is overall accurate to show many of the male characters, aside from the affluent ones, repeatedly wearing the same clothes over and over again. Importantly, though, while Perry Mason is on the fringes of polite society, he still upholds the base level of what would be considered acceptable clothing for a man at that time. He always wears a jacket outside of the home, for instance. Collared and button-down shirts are the norm. He'll almost always be wearing a tie in social situations, and he'll wear a hat whenever he's outdoors. Given Perry's practical approach, analytical mind, and what we expect to be his eventual transformation into a justice-bent defense attorney, we think that he'll probably get his style act together in the future as the series continues. Maybe it won't be quite to the same finely wrought level as his mentor cum father figure E.B. Jonathan, but it will probably be more elevated as time goes on. Speaking of Jonathan, then, let's get into the style of the character of E.B. Jonathan as played by John Lithgow. As the lead criminal defense attorney in Los Angeles, E.B. Jonathan is the most sumptuously and nattily dressed character on the entire show. He employs Perry Mason to do his detective work, and as we mentioned before, he acts as sort of a father figure to Mason. He's often depicted sitting behind his broad office desk or drinking whiskey in his gentleman's club, seemingly oblivious of prohibition. He wears a completely new ensemble in almost every scene he's featured in, which speaks not only to his affluence, but also to his position in society. He exclusively wears three-piece suits that feature soft patterns like stripes or overchecks. The material in these suits is quite heavy, so it will drape attractively. This was a key feature of 1930s suiting, which prized structure and shape. Like many of the other characters on the show, he fully embraces all of the accessories that were common of 1930s dressing, such as collar clips, watch chains, Winchester shirts, and so on. His shirt collars are pointed but detachable, which is a holdover from the Victorian era. While they do have a more modern shape, they give him an aura of authority and suit his position and his goals well. His Hamburg hats and watch chains mark him out as a member of the older generation, whereas men of Perry's generation are typically seen wearing things like fedoras and wristwatches. He also owns a shawl-collared silk bathrobe in a navy pattern, which we think is supremely elegant. Next, we'll cover the style of Perry Mason's investigative sidekick, Pete Strickland, as played by Shea Wiggum. Overall, his style is a bit more irreverent and playful, which seems appropriate for his wisecracking, sailor-mouthed character. Pete typically acts like he's resentful of authority or men with greater power and status than he has, so his clothing choices may be a deliberate way to illustrate that he's not going to fall in line with typical definitions of authority. An example of this is that he too wears button-down shirts and ties, but often somewhat unbuttoned and loosely tied, to illustrate that he may be wearing them begrudgingly more than anything. He also wears a flat cap, possibly to illustrate his lower class status, although it may again just be to show that he doesn't want to wear the hat styles that are common for men in higher stations. This is in contrast to Perry, who wears a scruffy fedora as a fallen member of the middle class that gives the impression that he has given up somewhat. Pete's patterns are often bolder and combined together in the same outfit, showing that he's a bit more flashy overall. 
For example, he's got an overcoat in a small plaid pattern, which is worn with wide striped ties. And again, like Perry, we do also see Pete wearing the same clothes repeatedly. Next up, the style of Paul Drake as portrayed by actor Chris Chalk. As a black police officer on the deeply racist and corrupt Los Angeles Police Department, Paul is frequently marginalized and threatened if he doesn't do as he's told by the other officers. Meanwhile, though, he also has one of the most interesting wardrobes on the show. He's frequently depicted in his police uniform, which is structured and crisp in much the same way as a military uniform might be. It features epaulets, brass buttons, a belt, and a cross-chest strap. His wide-legged pants are neatly creased, and they always break perfectly over his shoes. His uniform is worn with a crisp white shirt and a dark necktie. He also has a couple of other distinct ensembles when wearing civilian attire. His clothes are pressed, neat, well-fitted, and never stained or shabby. Because of both his line of work and his already marginalized status in society, he really doesn't have the luxury of being sloppy and lazy with his clothing like Pete and Perry do. One noteworthy garment is a belted, peacoat-length, double-breasted jacket that appears to be in a rusty brown color. When observed more closely, however, it can actually be seen to be a unique blend of yellow, black, and orange threads. It has wide, rounded lapels that extend almost to his shoulders. Paul also acts as a good example of the styling of 1930s button-down shirts. His shirts frequently feature small patterns and motifs with long spear collars and narrow collar spreads. They'll also feature bold stripes in shades of blue and white, for example. And he pairs these shirts with characteristically 1930s ties that are again short and boldly patterned. We think that his bold, crisp, and unique wardrobe speaks to his own personal pride and dignity, and he's probably a character who will similarly evolve over the course of the show. For a few other specific examples, here's a handful of other noteworthy outfits from the show. The character of the district attorney who's occasionally seen is a fan of large bow ties, first of all. A film executive in episode one wears a navy pinstriped suit with a long pointed collar. And a studio owner, also in episode one, is depicted in white tie. If you'd like to learn more about the white tie dress code or the black tie dress code, you can do so using our comprehensive black tie guide on the website here. Finally, we'll mention the owner of a gambling hall in episode three, who's seen wearing a dark shirt and an ivory jacket. So as far as the accuracy of the costuming overall is concerned, the show has certainly leaned in to getting the aesthetic of the 1930s down. With that said though, they have made a few choices that are less than authentic. As we said before, we think that Perry's leather jacket is an unusual choice for an everyday around town jacket, although there may be some unexplained personal attachment to it for him. Also, it could simply be a visual shorthand to clearly differentiate him from the other characters. As we also mentioned before, standard rise pants aren't really part of the 1930s look, but Perry also wears them frequently. We don't see many of the characters wear suspenders or braces either. Certainly E.B. Jonathan wears them underneath his suits and waistcoats, but for this time we probably would have expected seeing other characters like Pete and Perry wear them as well. With the style breakdown out of the way then, let's talk about how to get the look of the Perry Mason series if you're so interested. You probably won't be surprised to hear that we don't actually recommend directly emulating the style of Perry Mason's character, as I'm in fact doing here today, but there are still some things we can take from the character that he does do well. 
First, a leather jacket in a classic silhouette is something that's always going to be in style. It's better to have a few tried and true quality pieces in your wardrobe that you can wear multiple times rather than having lots of things that you don't like to wear. Granted, they shouldn't necessarily be worn so often that they're shabby, but if you maintain your clothing, wearing something that's versatile and can be paired with many different elements is always a safe bet. Next up, vintage hat styles like fedoras can flatter many faces, and they're an easy way to add some vintage cool to your outfit. The wider the brim and the higher the crown of the hat, the more old school it's going to look. So play around with different hat styles until you find one that suits you best. By the way, for our video on how to find the right hat for your face shape, you can go here. The single easiest way to get a 1930s look to your outfits is to wear collar jewelry. Nearly every professional male character on the show does wear some form of collar jewelry. Some wear collar clips, like this gentleman, a prominent local businessman who is the father of the defendant in the story. Others wear collar bars, such as this corrupt cop and still others wear collar pins, such as E.B. Jonathan. Overall, it's just a great look. You can check out the Fort Belvedere shop here for our wide selection of collar clips, bars, and pins, now including collar clips in a new, longer length. And you can also find our video on how to specifically style a collar clip here. On that note, then, we love how the best-dressed characters on the show are generally keen on wearing accessories. They use far more of them than the average modern man would, but accessories like pocket squares, tie clips, tie chains, and cufflinks round out their outfits with additional style elements. Also, we'd recommend that you give the three-piece suit a try. Nothing projects an air of confidence and authority in quite the same way as a three-piece suit does. It's an elegant and professional look, and especially in colder seasons, having the extra layer of fabric from the waistcoat can come in handy. And if you don't have a specific three-piece suit, you can also try the style technique of wearing a two-piece suit with a contrasting waistcoat for a slightly more playful feel. Also, when wearing this three-piece suit, don't forget to put on all of the accessories, including a pocket square, pocket watch or watch chain, bow tie or necktie in silk, collar clip or pin, and a hat. Again, taking specific style inspiration from the character of Paul Drake, you should endeavor to find an overcoat style that fits you well. Finding something unique is probably going to be most easily achieved by buying vintage, and if you do this, it will add a layer of complexity to an entire season's worth of outfits. Also, try different shirt patterns, like stripes, micro patterns, and so on. Today's shirt wardrobes are often dominated by plain whites and blues, but Paul's character reminds us that there are a variety of different shirt pattern options out there to experiment with. Also, if you're tired of the current skinny trends, or if you just don't have particularly thin legs, in either case we'd suggest that you try experimenting with wider-legged pants. A well-cut pair of wide-legged trousers that feature the proper amount of break for your leg length will probably be flattering to more men than the current trend for super skinny styles. Wider leg doesn't necessarily have to mean wide leg, of course, just something that's a bit more substantial than current fashions would dictate. And finally, a medium high to high rise on your trousers will also lengthen your leg line or diminish the appearance of an overly long torso, thus making you look more built up and traditionally masculine overall. As mentioned previously, in today's video, I'm going for a style that is directly aping the character of Perry Mason. Not something we would recommend for everyone, but something we thought would be playful for the nature of the video today. The centerpiece, of course, is my vintage brown leather jacket, which has certainly seen its fair share of wear and tear over the years. 
I'm wearing it undone to show off the striped pattern of my shirt, which is more vintage in style, as well as my medium brown tie that also features a repeating micro pattern. This isn't a 1930s length short tie, but it still gets the point across with the size of its pattern, as well as how it's harmonizing with the other wardrobe elements. My brown leather belt is also showing its age, and its silver buckle is quite worn overall. My trousers are in a plain brown shade, and they are somewhat wrinkled and rumpled. I'm wearing plain brown socks, and my brown derby shoes are also showing quite a bit of wear, as I've had them for many years. The thick, all-rubber soles aren't necessarily period-accurate to the 1930s, but their overall shop-worn character seemed appropriate for today's video. And my final style element today is my black fedora. This is another element that I've had in my own personal wardrobe for many years, which is why it's showing so much age. If I had chosen to ape the style of one of the other characters on the show, E.B. Jonathan, for instance, that would have given me an opportunity to wear far more accessories. And in that case, I could have gone to the Fort Belvedere shop to look for some. We've got a wide array of different kinds of menswear accessories, including pocket squares, ties, collar jewelry, and more, so be sure to take a look to find something that you'll love. <laughs> Thank you.